God bless the United States of America. What a blessing it is to be with you today. What a blessing it is to be with men and women committed to defending our nation, committed to defending our Constitution, committed to defending the principles upon which the United States of America was founded. This is a time of consequence. This is a time where the fate of the nation is being debated. Speaking of debates, how many of y'all watched the Democratic debate last night? I thought I'd turned on Comedy Central. You know, there's actually a medical term for what's happening to the Democratic Party right now. It's called stark raving nuts. But I want to commend you two simple words. Defend freedom. Now let's talk about freedom. Let's talk about economic freedom. The last two and a half years, we saw an historic tax cut. We've repealed job-killing regulations. And what's happening in the economy? We've got the lowest unemployment in 50 years. We have the lowest African-American unemployment ever recorded. We have the lowest Hispanic unemployment ever recorded. And the lowest youth unemployment in 70 years. It's for a very simple reason, freedom works. If you want jobs, if you want higher wages, you want small businesses growing, expanding, hiring. And what is the Democrat solution last night? Higher taxes. By the way, 70% is their new proposed tax rate. 70%. Scripture tells us to tithe 10% to God and 70% to Uncle Sam. We saw last night an embrace of socialism. We saw last night Democrats saying that they want to cancel, to make illegal every private health insurance plan in America. Now, how many of y'all remember just a few years ago, Barack Obama saying, if you like your plan, you can keep your plan? <laughs> if you remember, PolitiFact labeled that the lie of the year. Well, I'll give the Demo Democrats credit now. Now they're not even pretending. They're saying, if you like your plan, doesn't matter, we're taking them all. Because putting the government in charge of your health care, what possibly could go wrong with that? We need to defend not just economic freedom, we need to defend religious liberty, something each and every one of us cares deeply about. Now we've seen in the last two and a half years the President nominating and the Senate confirming 123 new federal judges. Every one of our rights in the Bill of Rights, we depend on the judiciary to safeguard those rights. And I'll tell you, when it comes to religious liberty, we are seeing threats and abuses proliferating. I'll give just one example, a recent example. Yale Law School, just a few months ago, announced a new policy. A policy that Yale was go announced it is going to deny financial aid to Bible-believing Christians who believe in traditional sexual values. Well, let me give you the backstory of this. The Alliance Defending Freedom, a group many, many of us are, are deeply familiar with, wonderful public interest law firm that defends religious liberty cases, that argued the Colorado Baker case at the Supreme Court and won an historic victory for religious liberty. Well, ADF 
had one of its lawyers speaking at Yale Law School. And so the LGBT group at Yale named Outlaw, Outlaws, which I have to admit is kind of a clever name, well, they did what leftists do. They protested. They protested how dare an institution of learning hear from lawyers who just won a 5-4 case at the Supreme Court. Protect our fragile ears from this assault. And they convinced Yale to deny financial aid to any Yale student who would go work at ADF as long as ADF believes in traditional marriage and traditional sexual values. Well, I'll tell you, when I saw that, I chair the Constitution Subcommittee of the Senate Judiciary Committee. When I saw that, I launched an investigation of Yale's discrimination against religious faith. Yale receives every year hundreds of millions of dollars of federal taxpayer dollars. And under existing federal civil rights law, it is illegal for them to discriminate based on religious faith. And we are going to hold them to account. Defend freedom. We need to defend freedom of speech. Just a couple of months ago, I chaired a hearing on big tech bias and political censorship. The effort of social media companies to silence the men and women in this room. You know, we had witnesses from Facebook and Twitter there. I asked the witness from Twitter, I put up a tweet that had been sent out by the Susan B. Anthony list. It had a picture of Mother Teresa, and the tweet had a quote from Mother Teresa that said, abortion is profoundly anti-woman. Twitter censored that tweet. They blocked that tweet. Ultimately, they let it go through, but they initially blocked it. So I asked the representative from Twitter. I said, is it Twitter's position, is Mother Teresa hate speech? Well, the first answer from Twitter was, well, it depends on what the context is. I said, look, context is 140 characters or less. You're looking at the whole tweet. There's nothing more. This is it. They refused to answer. We are seeing a pattern of big tech silencing, stifling conservative views, pro-life views, pro-Israel views. And let me say, that is dangerous. I can tell you, in the Senate, I am going to continue shining a light to defend our free speech, and we are not going to let big tech silence the men and women in this room. And so, and so I want to close by just exhorting you. The, the men and women in this room, you know how to pray, and you know how to stand and speak. And in 2020, our country is going to face an assault. We are going to see the biggest turnout on the far left this country's ever seen. That means we need to awaken the church. That means we need to awaken young people. That we, means we need to awaken every single lover of liberty in America because if we do not stand up and defend freedom, it will be taken from us and I am convinced together, standing up for this country, that's not gonna happen. We are gonna defend freedom in the United States of America.